be a very keen interest to some people. Um, I was going to put it down in a different format rather than speaking like this, but it may be easier to do it this way. It's about vitamin D. Vi now, I know like people get hit with all these different vitamins, minerals. This is good for you. That's good for you. That you know, it gets so confusing. A lot of people say to hell with it. You know, now, I know I put out something about vitamin C and. Uh, how animals I've actually in their body use it as a hormone and we used to probably have this capability many thousands of years ago and it's maybe alleged that's why people used to live so long uh, so that's a separate subject but you know if you want to look at that fine uh, it, it looks like it has a lot of scientific merit I'm not trying to go by hearsay or anything like that I'm trying to be highly accurate but at the same time I don't want to make you know you know outlandish promises or anything but vitamin D, uh, I know it's got, you know, actually a lot of, it's been coming out lately too, that vitamin D is extremely important to the body. Actually, you know, a lot of times people will say, it, I want to kind of get on with something here first, but you might find it very, uh, or people might find it more interesting is with uh, fat reduction. And I, and I actually just found out this association about this uh, until uh, recently by reading separate things separate scientific articles and things and I made the association but anyway uh, vitamin D actually has been noted to be extremely helpful in a number of different ways actually if you look at um, many diseases that are in prevalent in people like per you know so many thousands of people at the equator versus people that have less sunlight uh, a lot of times like multiple sclerosis is one you know, people have more multiple sclerosis, uh, more higher incidence of that where there's less sunlight. Now, I know like the typical doctors will tell you you don't have too much sunlight, it can cause cancer, but you know, there's other studies out there saying that people who are actually like office workers who are exposed mainly to like fluorescent lighting actually have more skin cancer, incidence of skin cancer than people that might work outdoors. And you know, this kind of makes sense in some ways because if some of things I knew about with people in Japan who might have been farmers and fishermen and worked out in the ocean where they actually get just the sunlight from I know they wear the big hats and stuff but they'll get sunlight you know, um, reflected from the ocean and from the waters and they'll be out all day and some of these people are living like a hundred years old and with no cancer and are being extremely active even in her late 80s so you know some of this I gotta go by some of that, but actually I want to point out first too about vitamin D, because if you decide to actually make sure you get a product with vitamin D, make sure you get the type that has vitamin D3 in it. Most vitamin D products and most supplements have vitamin D too. Now I know, I you know I guess it's controversial. Some medical people say it does make a difference. Some medical people say it doesn't make a difference. I'm going to say it does make a difference. There's something different about it. They wouldn't call it D3 and D2 if there wasn't something different about it anyway. One's a synthetic form and one's a natural form. Make sure, and you know, this is the actual long word that is actually associated with it, but as long as it says D3, just remember a triangle, three points on a triangle versus a straight line with two points. I don't know how to, maybe that's how you can remember it. But vitamin D3 has been noted for uh, many different things with it's so powerful in so many different areas that it's om it there's some people saying that it should actually be prescribed across the whole human population to help uh, minimize the incidence of various diseases some people are advocating that even medical some medical people even right now I'm going to put it out here about with fat burning and this is where I made an association which was like you know, it's not a common knowledge at all because actually there's a, uh, they call it IGF-1. It's insulin-like growth factor 1. Insulin-like growth factor 1. They isolated this in Japan in the year 2000. Now, what they found out about this, this actual, whatever the heck this stuff is, this growth factor, it's actually found in mice, it's found in humans, and they tested mice with injecting them more with this growth factor and they found that they were much leaner 
and they lived a lot longer. Even if their calorie intake was the same, they were leaner and they lived a lot longer. Now, I've read other medical studies where they tried, they said this was not true. So it's controversial, okay? But it is, as far as externally adding this growth factor in to the body. Now, you might say, what does that have to do with vitamin D? Well, with vitamin D, there's a particular, um, it's, there's a clotho protein that vitamin D increases. And without this clotho protein, the growth factor, factor, the insulin-like growth factor, one, will not perform. It has to have this clotho protein. So vitamin D will increase the clotho protein, which will also regulate calcium and phosphate in the body. So in other words, if, you know, this actual, this thing, like they call this, uh, this, this IGF-1, it's actually um, what enables animals to hibernate during the winter and live throughout the winter, you know, to say the bear or whatever it is, uh, goes throughout the whole winter and does not, uh, you know, eat anything and just hibernates, right? But, you know, their cells have to, cells, the body's cells have to actually function and they need constant energy or else they die. So what happens is this insulin-like growth factor, so basically it kind of works like, you know, the other, well, it's not exactly like insulin, but what, it, what it's causing is the body to actually burn the fat itself. Now, this is probably one major reason why some people are more prone to overweight versus some people are just prone to being normal weight or thin. That may have a lot to do with it. But again, I want to reiterate, it does not, it has to uh, work with clotho, a clotho protein, and vitamin D will increase the clotho protein. So in other words, if you have a shortage of vitamin D, you may have a shortage of pro clotho protein, and even if you have uh, a good amount of this insulin-like growth factor present in your body, which will keep you naturally thinner and from gaining weight, if you don't have enough of the clotho protein, it will not work, and vitamin D helps increase clotho protein. So, ergo, it may be that vitamin D, in some cases, can actually help people regulate their weight. Now, I don't think that's too much of a stretch because the science is there. Actually, um, I, I, I try to read the converse and, you know, the pro and the converse. There are some studies that will state that external introduction of this uh, IGF-1 protein or pro factor or whatever it is into the body will not cause the effects of it the same effects as people will have it in their body normally. In other words, these people um, that, like you introduce this I IGF-1 type factor into the body of the people that don't have it, they're resistant to what good benefits it can have. Supposedly they tested this. Now, I don't know, you know, I, I really sometimes wonder about a lot of these studies because some studies are saying one thing and one study is saying another thing. Like they say this factor, this, this type of stuff, you want to call it, the IGF-1, is very similar to what's in mice. But when they introduced it externally into mice, it had a major, major, major difference on longevity the actual activity and health of the mice. They said like mice were living like many years, or many, many years, but I guess it was a few years maybe, but it was like um, many, many months past their normal uh, life expect expectancy. And, you know, they did study actually ended before the mice, a lot of the mice died because they didn't think the mice would even last that long. I mean, that's, that's how much longevity it, it, it brought about. But um, it was a matter of um, they were, the mice were also leaner. 
they were burning their own body fat with the introduction of this insulin-like growth factor one, which was discovered in Japan in, in the year 2000. Now, this has also been touted to possibly be a reason for maybe uh, a method to you know eliminate diabetes. Now, I don't have diabetes. I don't have high blood pressure. I got like 120 over 67. I got like really normal. I got really low cholesterol. I think it's like, and the ratio is really good. I got all the garbage is, is cool. You know, I mean, I don't have, I'm not even researching this for myself per se. It's just that maybe that's partly why I don't have these problems because I kind of like paid attention to some of the different things uh, out there that supposedly are touted to help with overall health, like coconut oil, you know, could help with things like that, regulating blood sugar and cholesterol and things like that. I think my cholesterol is like the average, I think it's like 120 or something, you know, with good high density cholesterol. But I'm not even putting this out for myself, but what I found very interesting was, was from reading different studies, I made this association, like it's not from one area, but I found that vitamin D will increase the clothal protein now they were putting it out that you know it's going to help with phosphate and regulate phosphate in the body actually that's I'm going to just say this right here in this video phosphate in the body is actually a major aging factor and problem and we have high levels of phosphate in fast foods so if you want to know you know that's another reason to stay away from fast foods it has high levels of phosphate but uh, the vitamin D will help to uh, increase the clotho protein which will help regulate that but also like I re repeating it again because here's the association by increasing the clotho protein the if you have uh, a good presence of this uh, IGF-1 which burns the fat by increasing the clotho protein by taking vitamin D3 and if you have the presence of good amounts of this IGF-1 type of uh, substance or factor or whatever it is it will actually enable the body to burn fat and you will not feel like these energy deprivation when you don't eat you know if you maybe you don't eat for 12 hours or something like that I think that's one of the major factors where people sometimes they want to get into a state where they are burning fat and they're not feeling that energy deprivation and most people have a hard hard time with that because they feel very sluggish because they need the sugar and it may be just the way their body is you know it's like in other words one of the reasons why there's differences in people is this IGF or insulin like growth factor one okay so again it's like if you increase the clotho protein by taking vitamin D3 you can actually increase the activity of the insulin like growth factor one that's in your body that naturally burns fat so maybe indirectly vitamin D3 bes besides all the other host of different things where they're claiming it prevents this and does this and does that it may in certain since in certain people actually help them to burn fat and live longer and have lower blood sugar How's that? How's that? It may be. I mean, I'm looking at these various studies and I'm just putting two and two together and uh, it it's not it wouldn't be the case, I guess, if somebody was highly deficient in IGF-1 because if they increase their clotho protein, it may help them to regulate calcium and phosphorus, but it's not going to maybe do that much if they're really absent of this with this uh, insulin like growth factor one if they don't have any of that in their body but of the people that do have it and the problem is they don't have enough of the clotho, clotho protein D3 vitamin D3 may help them greatly and with um, burning fat longevity leanness and not having that sluggish feeling when you say you don't eat for 12 hours so I figured I'd pass this on because I think this is a tip out there where you know, I look at some of the various stuff that's out on YouTube about losing weight and what foods you should eat, and actually it's a complex subject.
you know, I can go excessive on that. I've actually probably got, I don't want to put, I think I posted it before, pictures where I was almost like halfway anorexic, you know. But uh, you can go excessive with that. But uh, I've seen things on YouTube where people were recommending banana diets and stuff. And I'm like, wow, man. <laughs> oh, boy. But anyway, this is something, um, it may not work like a miracle, but in some cases, I am not sure. It may. It may. It may. Like I said, I've just researched the hell out of this for the last several weeks. And uh, I just made this association. So it could very well be, again, I'm going to say it again, it's D3 will help increase the clotho protein. And clotho protein is vital to making this insulin-like growth factor 1 work. The insulin growth factor 1, if you have it in adequate presence of it in your body, you will, um, it will enable you to um, be leaner, leaner and burn fat without feeling this energy bonk. So it may work for some people, maybe a significant number of people. And uh, e in either case, vitamin D3 is highly beneficial. And again, make sure you get D3, not D2, the synthetic version. Um, so that's my recommendation anyway. Get the natural version. Always stick with the natural.